completing a wood and steel crib for a 1,750-pound Anyang power hammer. William Hovey Smith, 2019. I'm the owner of a knife company, Hovey's Knives of China. And in this company, we take inspiration from Chinese bronze knives of 3,000 years ago, and we make kitchen cutlery for modern stainless and carbon steels. I'm also the author of 18 books. Uh, many of these are outdoor publications, but I also have a business book, Create Your Own Job Security, on how you can start your own company at any age, anytime, anywhere, to raise whatever kind of money you need. My newest work is a fiction book, Father of the Grooms. In this book, I trace the adventures of an American family of Sicilian origin who has two sons that are having marital difficulties, can't seem to be or stay married. So consequently, Dad decides it's time to go to Sicily so they can perhaps meet some nice Sicilian girls. Well, their mafia relatives take this a little more seriously. And in fact, when they arrive on Monday, they are informed that the wedding is to be on Friday. Hmm. Well, the two guys sort of won't out. And they arrange some things uh, to try to get the gals to call off the wedding. But nothing doing. Come Friday morning, they're going to be marched up to the church. Or the entire family may meet with an unfortunate accident in Sicily. This is Hobie Smith, the Backyard Sportsman. And we're cutting steel today to put on the crib for my Anyang power hammer. And this steel is 16 gauge. It's unusually thin. So what I'm going to do is I have a cut off one foot wide strip of the material and I'm going to cut some parallel bands on it for later use in making laminated steel knives and also to build up canisters for making canister style Damascus. I tried to get everything out and arranged here and as you can see I have this piece of steel already scribed and I use a piece of soft aluminum uh, rather than talc pencils uh, just because the aluminum is more durable. Well, my practice has shown me I could cut metal, but not very well, not very cleanly. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and start. And that piece I've outlined on the corner is where the 2x4 and one of the upright right angle pieces of iron that's tied into one of the posts uh, needs to clear. The first piece is cut out and not at all pretty. But that at least gives a hole that will clear those two objects on the edge of the crib. We now have our notches on the sheet steel cut. There's one, two, three on this edge. And then one square in the top. While we have the sheet out here, and I can drill it vertically, I'm going to go ahead and drill some holes in the sheet iron to set some long screws to actually hold it in the wood. At the conclusion of the day's work yesterday, we got this sheet of 16 gauge steel cut out and inside the house and sort of in the crib. And you can see it there leaning up against one edge. Now the problem is getting it flat enough against that wall over there so I can screw it in and mount it permanently. Hmm. Well, some solutions come to mind. One of which 
it's too heavy, I can't handle it, cut it in half. All right? But that would leave a seam that would uh, be halfway up the wall, which is exactly where I don't want it. Another solution, we do have an eye pull up there in the middle for hoisting the power hammer, but that puts it two feet away from the end wall, although it's standing vertically. Uh, I can't magically transport it. If I swing it over, yes, I can touch it, but it'll be several inches too tall to cover the bottom, where most of the danger really is for a piece of hot metal getting against the wood and actually igniting and starting a fire. So that doesn't work. So, we could attach a pulley perhaps to the standing beam over there on top and pull it up with that. That would put another hole in that beam, weaken it, and still uh, it would get it up, but then the pulley would get in the way of actually attaching it flush against the top of the wall. So all of these solutions, though possible, are not practical. So there must be another way. This handyman jack, which I have called a high lift jack, uh, has been used to straighten up this wall. Well, now the crib is so far along I can go ahead and remove it. Because as it turns out, I may not need the jack again, although I could. But more significantly, I need that blank space. You can see how it's connected to the wall there with an eye hook up at top. And so now we're going to release the tension off that wall and you can check and see if it moves as I do. I have rearranged my shop furniture here another time and that way I could put my ladder in and retrieve my rope from up there but that is not the only reason for making this space. I'm pre-drilling a series of holes around the periphery of this sheet uh, so that I can obviously uh, screw it to my supporting columns, but to get the bit to take in the slick metal, you really have to make an indent in it, or what it will do, is the bit will just skate around on the surface, not right. So you start to drill slow, See it's wanting to wander. And then speed up once you get some metal being removed. Okay, now we're through. I'm going to do one more thing with that hole. Now that I have it started, I'm going to enlarge it. On my cut here, and on the one in this side, I've got some little tits sticking out that could interfere. So I'm going to take those off with the angle grinder. For the sake of uniformity, I'm going to go ahead and manhandle that piece of steel over to the beam so I can shoot a half inch hole uh, near that square cut out notch. I now have the hole drilled so I can attach a hoist loop and we're going to outfit that with a hook from the winch and start working our piece of sheet steel up against the side of the wall. I've now brought our game hoist tripod into the shop. 
to see if we can reposition it to actually move that piece of sheet steel. And it was touch and go indeed to see if the tripod would actually work. And it looks like it will. It's not going to allow much clearance over the top of there. But, uh, yeah, it will clear the top of the wall once I get the other two legs on. The tripod is up. We have a foot of clearance over the top of the structure. And that is what is needed to hoist this piece of sheet steel. Let's see if we can get things started. Things are starting to move a little bit, I think. Yes. Okay. It's coming up. It hasn't gotten to the tripod leg yet, but soon. A few more clicks and I'll have to move it manually. Now I'm going to have to adjust it so it passes uh, on the inside of that leg. We are almost where we want to be. Uh, it's catching up on the top of that angled brace there. So I'm going to need to take my angle grinder and cut uh, oh, approximately an inch away to allow that to clear. Then we'll be able to actually start putting screws in this wall and get it attached. I'm setting the screws in the bottom of the wall uh, by first pre-drilling a hole and then using the impact wrench to set the long screws. All right, now that got it up snug. That's exactly what's desired. Once more we have our tripod erected and we can attach our pull cord to our piece of sheet steel and the hole we previously drilled. We have, as you see, a bow in this piece of sheet steel, but as we tighten up the screws from top to bottom, that will work out, and so we'll wind up exactly where we want to be. We have completed the construction of our crib to hold our Anyang power hammer. And I'm looking at it right here, and it looks rather formidable. Uh, we built this nominally four by seven feet and this was to make efficient use of materials that we could buy in four by eight sheets like plywood like two by fours and eight foot lengths and also four by fours and this is the waste material we have left over so as a build it was a pretty efficient operation uh, will it really work? Well, I'm looking at the power hammer right now, and it's going to go in here pretty shortly. Uh, next, we're going to physically move the power hammer inside here. We have to hoist it to get it off the dolly it's on, lower it down, separate it into two sections, Fill the base with sand 
and then reattach everything. Hmm. Well, that's going to be interesting. And so we're going to be mining and drying some sand as well as probably putting in another winch on here mounted permanently. So if I have to, I can remove sections of the power hammer with mechanical aids and not have to physically lift it all by hand in this very confined space. But now this is Hobie Smith reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Be legal, be ethical, be safe. Goodbye, God bless, and see you next time. In this early part of the book, I'm still introducing the characters. So now, uh, we know something of the father and the mother, uh, a bit more about the two brothers, uh, something about the two gals or two be involved, and why they are willing to accept the marriage of two, of two Americans that they've never laid eyes on. And we've also introduced uh, two members of the AIA, which is an Italian anti-mafia association. And things are progressing quite nicely. Uh, we have one of our guys on his way now to back to Baton Rouge, driving an old beat-up scout across the Mojave Desert. And he has had some adventures in Las Vegas. This piece of sheet steel is thin enough to cut in or crush bones and limbs should it fall on you. So be very careful. Uh, don't depend on friction alone to hold it in place. If you have to leave it for a while, always tie it up. Now if I was going to do it again, I think I would have made most of the cuts that I could have with an angle grinder and only used the cutting torch to cut those slots out that where I could not reach. For more information on my book, 750 videos, and other projects, go to www.hoviesmith.com. For information on Hovey's Knives of China, go to Hovey's Knives of China blog.co. And to discover what's going on in the latest chapters of Father of the Grooms and how you may join and actually participate in the project, uh, you can go to fatherofthegrooms.net. See you in the movies. Goodbye. And God bless.